And here we go. Well, hello everyone, Dan Her with Dan Her Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. As you just saw, I got a helicopter ride into work today. We are up high in the Purcell Mountains, prospecting on the top of a mountain. What a ride up the hill. That was awesome. We have lots to find today. So wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. With me today is my buddy, George. Well, hello everyone. <laughs> my wife, Dana. Hello. And my son, Evan. Hey. Plus there's a bunch more loading on the helicopter right now to come on up. We are up here on the top of the mountain at George's claim, looking for penolite, also known as penolith, and all sorts of other amazing rocks up here. Plus they have found gold right here, and I mean significant gold. So let's see what we can find. Yesterday I was down there at the gold mine. My buddies Carson and Joe were, you know, invited me out to find some gold, which is just down the hill. And these rocks up in the mountains here is the source of the amazing gold. If you didn't see yesterday's video, it would have been last week on my channel, go back and check it out. We got amazing gold. I think like seven to 10 ounces of gold probably. And big nuggets. If you didn't see that video, go back and check it out. And then finish watching this one. We already found some very bizarre looking rocks. <laughs> Look at those things. That's not what we're looking for today. Although we'll probably find more than just penolite on the excursion today. 100% you will. It's up there somewhere. What? <laughs> the penolite. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. See that big mound right up there? Yep. That's all penolite. That whole outcrop is penolite. See these uh, shelves sticking out up here? Uh, yes, right here. That's all penolite. Nice. The slide area over here is just loaded with penolite. The whole penolite slide. everywhere. Penolite everywhere. Well, let's go find some. Now there's penolite everywhere up here, but George has taken us over to a spot that he likes the look of. He saw some real nice rocks up there. We're gonna go have a look at those right now. Penolite all through the pile here. Now it doesn't look like the same stuff that we got at the gold mine because that, down at the gold mine, it was all river run type rock. A glacial till. Glacial till, but it's been rounded. It's been yeah. tumbled. It's been washed. This stuff is straight off the mountain. I had to take a moment there and catch my breath. We're at 7,500, 75? 7,500. 7,500 feet right now. And the air is a little thinner up here. Me with my bad lungs, uh, <laughs> I had to catch my breath for a second. Anyhow, we've got penolite everywhere. Penolite, penolite, penolite. And uh, we're gonna start looking for the best pieces and start bagging it up to get out of here on the helicopter. Huge, big chunk of it there. That one would be beautiful. It would be absolutely stunning. Look at the size of it. Yeah, that's a little one. Just a little guy. It honestly is, yeah. That's a beautiful piece, How much Cliff. Is that is. Mark just found a nice one. Well, right Look at on the patterns. Rock, now they're weathered up here. Because of the hard, they're broken oh, off hard right, rock on top of a mountain, everything is very weathered. But when cut, that is going to show the most amazing patterns. And of course, I'll show you in the video, many of these things cut open. Big, rocks. big chunks of it down there. Big chunks of it down That's there. a great big outcrop of penolite right here. And anything that falls off that ends up down into that teleslope. What it is, is we saw the end of the ridge line there. Right where we were working. Yep. You see this pile here. 
You see that rock outcropping there? That was the ridge of penolite. The slide started above the penolite at the top of the hill and it came down and ate through that. Well, this ridge goes over probably a good 150 meters and the whole ridge line was <laughs> penolite and that's now mixed into here. We don't know how deep it originally was, right. but we do know that it was at least that deep when this slide came down and took out both sides of it. But George, it down the below, there's going to be just a, a mix of everything that's above. We've already pulled 80,000 to 100,000 pounds out of the slide pile down below. And the biggest problem is without machinery, we can't move the, the bigger big rocks, rocks to get them out of the way of the ones that are buried. Yep. So when we get a bigger helicopter, we can come in and move the big rocks and get to another scraping of the 800 to 1,000 pound rocks below that. Yep. And we can do that for years on this slide shoot alone. The geology the same on the other side of the valley? No. It's, it's different. Yeah. Just this ridge here has got it. Just this, well, from here all the way back into the bowls. See that next peak? kind of thing not this first one but the farthest one to the left over there okay again. yep That's it goes all the way over there and past there wow it, it's from here <laughs> to there evan found a piece a piece that i really like it'll fit in my saw there's an end broken off yep. so you can really see the pattern inside is exactly what i want very black blacks very white whites and great leaf patterns or flower patterns. Let's get that one in the bag. That's our first bag find of the day. Well done, Ev. First rock in the bag. And those three just put about a 500 pound rock in that bag. <laughs> but I've got another five pound rock. <laughs> okay. I'll make sure the bag is, whoa, okay. flip it, I'll pull it, uphill, uphill, there, there we go. go. What do you think, four or five hundred pounds? Three hundred and seventy, three and a half. Okay, precisely. <laughs> Evan just pulled out a beautiful quartz crystal plate. That won't go in the big bag, that goes in your pocket. We'll clean that up nicely. Oh, I just heard George say he found a Dan piece. Let's go have a look. That's perfect. That's perfect. Cause you that know, fits on my medium sized saw. I love the pattern that I can see the dark line through the middle with crystals going on both sides. Yeah. That is perfect. Yeah. And this one here has got some of the bigger flowers. It's more of the traditional that we have up here, but these are almost like starbursts. Yes. Like this yes. pattern right here. It's not the best pattern, but it's a really nice size cutting yes rock, yes and it's easy to get loaded so we'll find you a whole bunch that fit in that size category up here today perfect perfect yeah. it fits my saw yeah and that's you happy with that one happy happy there we go that chunk came off the corner of that big rock right there it tells me that the inside of that whole rock is exactly what i'm looking for the three minerals the right pattern big leaves big flowers we're happy with that one and i think i can get that on my big saw so there might be the biggest rock I take today. So here's a great piece I just chipped off the corner that shows you the three minerals that make up penolite. Uh, the white cube piece there is dolomite. The black is a graphite. And the white crystals that look like flowers or leaves, that's magnesite. Magnesite, dolomite, and graphite with a little bit of pyrite in there just to add a nice color. A little bit of spice with the pyrites. <laughs> Mark is just pulling out piece after piece. He has the eye for it today. That's what I like, the really, really dark black with those <clears throat> plant-like crystals growing out of it. Happy birthday, early Ooh. birthday. When's your birthday? Uh, March. Okay. We got a ways. <laughs> <laughs> I wish so much these rocks would show a bit better out here in the field, what I'm seeing, what I know is inside this. But looking at this, it's very weathered, yes, but I see lots of very black with extremely defined, well-defined crystals in it. That is nice. So unfortunately, my last little trip up the hill, I didn't bring my camera with me, so I couldn't show you all the pieces I was taking. But the bag is probably about 300 pounds now. 
of material. Uh, 422. 422 precisely, yes. And uh, <laughs> we're still seeing lots of great stuff. Dean has got a treasure. Dean has got a treasure. Dean is trying to fall on me. There you go. She fell for me once. She'd never make that mistake again. Oh yeah. Long skinny crystals in the vein. It would fit on the saw. And it will fit on the saw. That's what's most important up here. <laughs> so earlier I said this was George's claim, but it's actually your claim, isn't it, Cliff? Yeah, yeah. we're, uh, he's a salesman. I'm the excavator operator. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me uh, come up here today. It's been quite an adventure so far. Yeah, no, as you see, we've got a bit of a gathering here today. It's, uh, yeah. it's great to have your participation along the way. Well, thank you so much. We are finding so much stone here. It is crazy. Yeah, pictures don't even do it justice, do they? No, not at all. And I think I have a little pile over there of some goodies I got to go yeah. investigate. Yeah. I'm having too much fun collecting rocks. I'm forgetting to film everything. This is a good one. It's weathered on both sides. It's the full seam and perfect thickness for my saws. So we'll be able to cut that. You'll see linear crystals. So crystals that go up and down inside of it. Could look like the perfect jungle scene when done. How you doing, Ev? Good. Tired. <laughs> It's a great piece. I don't know if I can carry it though. Oh, I can carry it. Can I get across the slide? Well, we got one heck of a load from this site here. Clifford says that my bag is getting to the point of what the helicopter can lift out of here. So we'll put a bit more in, but not too much. George's bag is full. It's got enough weight. We have one more bag that we're gonna go over the ridge because there's another type over there. We'll fill one more bag over on that side. But this is the bag that I get to take home, cut, and show you guys what it looks like. I better get going. The crew is already running away from me. High up in the alpine, plants still flourish. They're a different kind of plant up here, a hardy type of plant up here. But look at that, a flower. Can't breathe. You're not having any problems. Not yet. The air is thin and it's smoky. <sighs> And I believe we're coming up on the next slide that contains penolite. The tree line That's over. So the tree line over there. And we're starting to see pieces now as we come through. Very, very weathered and very small. We won't take that because it's so small and so weathered that the weathered surface takes up a significant percentage of the rock. We need bigger ones so that inch of weathered at the outside gives way to good unweathered stuff in the middle. There we go. Small, small grained penolite over here, for sure. It's everywhere. More down there, more here. Oh, and there's a little guy. <laughs> Look at that thing. Wow. I'm standing on penolite and a lot of it. Now we are passing over a lot of penolite here and just leaving it in place. We only have about 4,000 pounds we can actually helicopter out today. But this is Clifford and George's claim and it doesn't mean that this is the only time they have a chance to take things out. These rocks that we're passing over someday may get in a bag of their own and be taken out of here. On a big work program they could take tens or hundreds of thousands of pounds out of here. Today is kind of just like a prospect. We're going up to see what good stuff we can find. But on a big work program, they'd be bagging up masses to send off to get made into spheres and carvings and skulls and towers, sinks, bathtubs, all that kind of stuff. But today we're just getting a small sample of good stuff that I can sell on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com, uh, for lapidary artists to make their own stuff out of. Plus I have some finished product as well. We have to head to the trees apparently. I had a bunch of people give me heck on uh, my video I did with Chris looking for that amylite about how much we left on the shore and thought we were just being wasteful. But I forgot to mention that in the video and a lot of people were horrified that we left all that great stone on the beach. So just like here, we're leaving a lot. It will be taken later. The amylite was taken the next day. I wanna take a closer look at this piece. I don't wanna hike much back because it's a long ways back, but I wouldn't mind at least one piece from the other site. And that's a nice piece because of its shape. I can throw that on the saw and cut little cubes out of there all day long. 
and it does look to have a nice tight pattern in it. That one might be going in my backpack. What was that, Dane? There's a lot of orange on that rock right there. This you... penolite rock? No, that, that your foot's on. Oh, something is rusting hard in it. Yeah. yeah. Look at these rocks. Just even the okay. random rocks up here are amazing. Okay, it's in the backpack. I'm sure I'm gonna regret this. I regret a lot of decisions I make. Hey. Not that one, no. I love that decision. The water, I need more water. Is that the decision? <laughs> no. And George jokingly tasked me, being the gold guy, to find the source of the gold they're finding around here. There's so much quartz, so much mineralized quartz, so many seams. Who knows where it could come from? But down at the bottom of some of these slides, they've done some placer tests of the slide material. Not really placer tests, but washing gravels at the bottom of some of these slides. And they found gold that is unbelievably fresh washed out of the rocks act like no rounding of water at all it has broken directly out of some of the quartz at the bottom of the, some of these slides and the gold mine i was at just the other day is just down the valley so somewhere up here is a really nice gold deposit but he was joking tasking me with that job because <laughs> it's an impossible task there is so much just look at that side we are on something that looks like that on this side obviously there are millions and millions of acres of ground that could be shedding the gold anywhere. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like There's this. your bathtub piece right there. And if you scan up, you'll see the ridge line. The first outcropping is about 30, 40, 60 feet wide right and there. stretches back a kilometer and a half up the valley from here. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> this one is something else. Oh, can you imagine carving a bathtub out of that? Grizzly bear, life-size grizzly bear. A life-size grizzly bear. Oh my goodness. One of the big resorts around here would pay a million bucks for that to have it in their lobby. Maybe not a million, but <laughs> I may exaggerate a little. Every rock I look at up here is like, whoa, wow, whoa, cool, gorgeous. Over and over and over again. Unfortunately, we're like a half hour hike from our big bag. So uh, carrying big rocks back. We're very limited in what we can carry back. There's some real nice ones over here. George has got a little one on his shoulder. From up here it looks little. <laughs> the prospecting is fun up here, but the scenery is outstanding. And I'm not just talking about Dana. So the boys have been filling the bag, and now they're unfilling the bag. Oh, wow. <laughs> Trying to get more in the bag. Right? Getting more in the bag. <laughs> they don't stack very much. Ah. You got a lot of weight in there already. Okay, Kiefer, you and I both lift on this side. Hang on, I'm going to do a 3, 2, 1, and if we all get a hold of it. 1, 2, three. There, that bought us some room. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would want that. must have been a George rock. That must have been. George was just pointing out this piece here, how it has very small flowers and leaves in it that are kind of a yellow color. There's a good example of it here. But as he is saying, every single person sees this rock has their own favorite pattern that they find in it. Some people like the small crisp yellow in the black matrix. Some people just like the black and white. I like black and white myself. Some people want the great big fans. Everyone has their own favorites. George found a good one. Small yellow crystals, just like the one I was just showing you up there. The one I was just showing we pulled out of the hole. Ev's now got it. He's going to carry that one back. Okay. And George is... You know what I want to do, Clifford? Yeah. Is get a... Mm -hmm. Dan can feed it under if you run the hammer. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> well done, gentlemen. Yeah, you can see... Now throw that on your shoulder and carry it back. You can see the flower pattern is going to have bursts. Yeah. Watch this. Yep. See how crystal clear them crystals are? <laughs> that will look so nice. Eight fall. Nope. <laughs> He's determined to get the next one too. Now he has a tool. He's invincible. I'm using a Dan hammer. <laughs> They're the best hammers. <laughs> I, I think I stole that hammer from Grizzly Discoveries. <laughs> Don't tell them. Not that it's not on a video. You bunched the rock. Did I? Yep. 
It was a small amount, but it moved. And if it moves, it means it can be extracted. But not from there. <laughs> that is a oh, that's a big rock though. Yeah, it's not moving that one. Oh, he says. Oh. Oh. Yeah, potential, potential. Hard to say how, with how well it's weathered, but let's see that edge, that back edge that was hidden in behind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe. Time to walk back to the first site, finish loading our bags, throw up the drone and get some aerial shots of this place, and the helicopter will be here in a couple hours to lift everything out. Except Evan, he stays behind. What'd you find, Pooch? What'd you find? A rock? Yeah. That's a nice rock you found. Well, that was fun. I was just flying the drone, getting some shots up here, and I decided that that bowl up there needed a good shot. So I flew my drone in that direction. Just over that first ridge, I lost sight of the drone, but I could follow from the camera where it was going. And it was going up the draw, all the way up, getting a great shot. And then the video started getting choppy. Like, uh-oh, I'm too far away. That's gotta be a kilometer away up there. And uh, I thought, okay, I better back off. So I stopped flying forward and started flying up, and then, nothing on the camera. All of a sudden I get this 10 second long lag of nothing and it all catches up at once as I watch the drone fly straight into a rock. So there I go, crashed another drone. Typically when you lose connection, the first thing you do is you push up on the controller, get it up away from everything. And the drone has smarts in it. So if it loses connection, first thing it does is fly up to a safe distance and then flies home automatically. But you have a few seconds of lag between it losing connection and it doing its automatic home. And in those few seconds, it flew straight into a rock. I thought for sure it was lost. We started hiking up the hill. And then a few seconds later, a minute or so, we heard the drone automatically flying home. <laughs> it hit the rock, but kept on flying. Got the drone back. This is what a really hard working work party looks like. <laughs> We've actually put like 4,000 pounds of rock in bags already. Got like an hour before the helicopter gets here. We get to relax a bit. A true rock hound working really hard. Hey, whose jacket are you sitting on? Huh? Whose jacket is that? So these are the Purcell Mountains out here. One mountain range before the Rocky Mountains. The infamous Rocky Mountains. Very, very interesting geology in this area. The penolite right here is actually formed underwater in a, at the bottom of the sea. It's a hot water vent under the sea that forms that. But it's been lifted way up into the mountains here through all of the tectonic activity. And this is a volcanic range, but that is a sedimentary rock. Sort of, because it's the bottom of the ocean. You know, that sounds like a great time for today's geology lesson of the day. The mountain ranges here in British Columbia are compressed seabed floor. The Purcell Mountains here was 200 kilometers of seabed floor that was compressed down into 20 kilometers. And as it got compressed down, volcanic vents came up through it, making this great big volcanic range. Then that volcanic range slammed into the next plate, which pushed the Rocky Mountains up. Earlier in history, these Purcell Mountains were the tallest mountains around. They have eroded down. But when that huge hammer of this mountain range plowed into the Rockies, it pushed that seabed up and made huge, huge mountains that we now know as the Rocky Mountains. There's today's geology lesson of the day. Fifteen minutes till pickup time. I keep shoving more rocks in my bag, but I have to remind myself that even if the helicopter can lift it, my truck can't take that much. And there 
There goes my rocks! And that makes four off the mountain. 4,000 pounds of rock. Well, that was freaking awesome. What a way to spend a day rock hunting on the top of a mountain, escorted in and out with a helicopter. And of course, the helicopter to take the weight of the stones too. I will definitely be showing you lots of pictures of Penalite Cut right here. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Time for me to take my ride off the mountain. If you did like the video, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Heard Prospecting. And an extra big thanks to both George and Clifford for inviting me up here today and supplying me with all this stone. Those guys are awesome. See you on the next video. Bye.